All right, so this one comes from Matt, a listener on the show, and it's a little long, so uh, I'm going to try and condense this as much as I can. Uh, I don't think many people would deny that Mario Kart 8's DLC was some of the best value uh, we've seen for paid add-on content. Don't disagree with that at all, Matt. Uh, For $12, you get literally... Excuse me. Almost fifty percent of uh, more content for the base game. It's really seemed like Nintendo was going to set a new standard for the way they handled DLC, but then Smash Brothers seems to go against that. Mm. Um, so he's bringing up that the new DLC pack. If I just want the stages and characters for one version of the game, it will cost sixteen dollars. That's only three characters, only one of which is new, and two stages. If I want the costume as well, that's close to $22. Then I want to uh, parody with the 3DS version for everything, and we're taking an extra dollar per add-on. We're talking an extra dollar per add-on. I think it adds up to close to $30. It's, yeah, it's, 20, it's like twenty nine fifty or something. Okay, got it, got it. So he basically is upset about, uh, by this. What happened here? I suppose the pricing is on par or even better than other fighting games, but when you compare it to the amazing value that was offered with Mario Kart, just just seems really skewed. Am I alone on this? No, it's it is abs- you're absolutely right. It felt it felt way more like a sort of Warner Brothers, Ubisoft, Game of the Year, uh, retail exclusive, all that sort of like when you went to go buy Watch Dogs or something, and it was you know there were seventy five different versions of it. Right. It felt like that where they're they're sort of piecemealing out character skins and costumes and items and weapons and stuff like that. And I don't want to say it's very un Nintendo because yeah, they haven't been doing this long enough yeah, they, to say they that. They don't have a right, precedence you, long enough. Right. Yeah. But I, I will say he's right in that the Mario Kart set the bar really high for the way you deliver a content package like that. Um, and I'm, I'm a little bummed out that it came out to be so much. I also thought it was weird that they went as far as to charge 99 cents for the, or, or a dollar for the, uh, the, the 3DS controller app. Which lets you play Smash Brothers without purchasing the game. Without purchasing the yeah, game, yeah, I um, think that's a little much to just let you sell, let you use a, a device you've already purchased. Like, I think Smash Brothers are getting a little off the rails in terms of DLC. Like, yeah, and if there's yeah. one game, it feels like they're willing to push that uh, and see what they can get. It might it makes sense to me that it be Smash Brothers versus yeah. another one, just because that fan base um, seems to really want more content for it. But I don't know what the the thinking is behind the pricing. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not saying it's terrible. But I do agree that it does seem a bit much, especially when you add up sort of uh, what you're getting. But it's always hard to do that, right? I feel it's always hard to sort of look at content and say, well, how much is this worth? You right. know? Mm-hmm. Um, and when you think about it in Smash Brothers, adding extra pieces like that does change the way that game plays to a yep. degree. It does sort of alter either the state of balance or there just seems to be a lot more work involved and it t- than yeah, maybe it, making a course yeah, in Mario Kart. Yeah, that's fair, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And it takes work to make those things. You know? And obviously, most of them are optional. I mean, I would I would argue that somebody like Ryu is not optional. Like, if you're a Smash Brothers guy, like you want all the characters. I don't know if you want all the, the Mii Fighter skins. Mm-hmm. Like, that's the thing you can probably skip out on. Right. But... Uh, those those uh, incentives become better to purchase one thing when they're bundled with other things. And that's the reason I bought all of them, even if I'll never even use them all. It was sort of just like, well, now I don't have to think about buying these down the line. You mm-hmm. know, if one day I wake up and I'm like, I really wish I had a Tekken character skin for my Miiverse guy. Like, I already have him now, even though I'll probably never use it. But that's uh, what we call digital hoarding. <laughs> and it's just yeah. as bad as physical hoarding. I, yeah, I'm yeah. on that train too. Um, yeah, I have friends who are, are pretty into the competitive Smash scene, and I think that... Adding new characters dev- does give you more options, um, and it with a fighting game it does alter uh, the balance of the game, I, uh, and it, it does take work. And I I don't know enough about um, the actual work involved to say what I think the pricing should be for that. Mm. It just it is very very asynchronous with Mario Kart. Um, it's just strange. I, I feel like people would want these extra characters and be able to to kind of reexamine their strategies and stuff for competitive right. play, but. Um, I don't need thirty dollars worth of extra Smash Bros. Like it's yeah. just, it's just, it's, and all the skins and all that. It, it seems like a lot. It's just... No, it does. Yeah, and I, I think at the end of the day, for anyone listening to this who agrees, I think that then it falls on you to just not buy it, you know, and to sort of push back by not supporting it. Because uh, at the end of the day, I mean, I yeah, I will Brian. openly admit, like, no, I I did it too. <laughs> I screwed up. I screwed no. up. How could you? You're right. I, I did <laughs> you it too. Hundred percent right. Hundred yeah. percent right. And it, and it kind of slipped under the radar. I feel with E3 that maybe the pricing on this was too high but I at the same time I do feel that it is 
uh, and maybe folks are going to disagree with me with, on this, but I'm sorry. But I do feel that is good that is Nintendo is sort of testing those waters and pushing those boundaries because I don't think everything deserves to be 99 cents, and I don't think yeah. everything deserves to be as devalued as you know, sort of the App Store and 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 all these other like sort of uh, places that we get our games make us think. Do right. I think that the pricing they settled on was perfect? Absolutely no. not. Mm -hmm. But I also think that at the end of the day, Nintendo should challenge the value of some of those things sure because yeah. i mean the 99 cent skin is also a dollar iphone game or it's five dollars for a character could probably buy you an entire other game at gamestop or something yeah. like money's all over the place when it comes to gaming and there's no like, like what you what you deem valuable for a dollar or five dollars or ten dollars uh skews based on which perspective that that's right. coming yeah. from you could buy yeah. some good indie games with that money yeah. and have it it depends on what you value yeah, right? yeah. I, totally i think it's fair to say you know they're allowed to push the boundaries and and decide what is fa a fair price for this mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i agree that it's not ideal um but i mean it, it is based on what you yourself value um as far as what your purchases are right yep. like I would rather buy, you know, a ten dollar indie game and play that than, you know, skins and new fighters. That's just me. Like that's, yeah. you know, that's well, it's yeah. your choice whether you want to buy, buy it or not. So. And you totally. couldn't help but look at that um, when you added up all the stuff you were getting in Mario Kart, you did feel like, holy cow, this is a great deal. Right. I I want to admit I have not done the math to add up all this stuff and see if the the bundle price is that much cheaper than what it would have cost. I would mm -hmm. imagine there is some savings there, but it's def it doesn't sound like it's enough when it's right. thirty bucks for all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. But then again, there's also a lot of licensing involved in this thing. Yeah, you have that's true. Ryu from Capcom. You have the Virtual Fighter guys. You have the Tekken lookalikes. Like, you know what I mean? Like that that stuff costs money at the end of the day. Right. So my my thing to folks, just don't buy it. If if this is if you see this on the next one and you're not satisfied by that, by all means step away and, and push back that way. And maybe that encourages them to then make some changes and some sure. decisions. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, there you have it. That is this week's Nintendo Voice Chat. And next week we will have Pear back on the show. Um and we'll still have a ton of stuff to talk about, which sadly we couldn't get to this week. Um, for example, there was a Nintendo investors meeting that I would love to talk about, but uh, we just don't have the time. But there's, thank there's, there's Super Mario Maker, which comes with 100 levels. I can't wait to talk oh about that. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. All right, awesome. quickly, quickly, so go cool. for it. No, that's levels. awesome. That's yeah. actually that's more levels than any Mario game has ever come with, which yeah. is yeah. amazing. Uh, it's I think it's like 10 or 12 more than Super Mario World, okay. which is right. seen to, to most as one of the best Mario games ever sure, made. Sure, sure. Mm -hmm. um, and that that's if you never even connect to the internet, never make your own levels, never download a that's single right. other stage. There, it, there's 100 totally insane stages. And we got to play, I mean, in the playable version in E3, I want to say there was like 40 or 50 of them, yeah, maybe more than yeah. that, maybe less. Okay. Um, and there's just a really awesome variety there. So mm -hmm. at without doing a thing, Mario Maker's right off the bat probably going to be one of the best Mario games ever made. Oh, I'm yeah. super excited about yep. it. No, no pun intended. I didn't mean to do that. But <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, it, yeah, very, very promising. I loved watching it at E3. I'm, yep. I'm very yeah. excited. It, cool. gets, it gets better every time we hear about it. Yeah, so um, definitely. I'm, I can't wait. All right. Well, there you have it, folks. That is Nintendo Voice Chat for the week of June 25th. And as always, we thank you for supporting the show. But we are not the only show on IGN. In fact, this weekend, the IGN house party is real. Brian Altano and the crew from Beyond, excuse me, along with uh, Ryan McCaffrey and the crew from Unlocked. That's right. We're going to be throwing a big party. Of course, some NVC folk will be there in attendance yep. to support because you guys deserve that support. But it'll be a big deal. It's happening. It's happening tomorrow morning. That's Saturday morning. Uh, it starts at 1130. Mm -hmm. And it's you can find, you, I think there might be a few tickets left. Okay. If you're in the neighborhood and you want to get on that, like now, now is your, yeah. your final it's chance. It's go.ign.com slash house party. That's there right. You go. Yeah, the and one. more. More than a, a celebration of the anniversaries of our podcast, we have Podcasts Unlocked, uh, episode 200, Podcast Beyond, episode 400. Um, this is really a celebration of our audience, and it's just how awesome it is that we can we can bring the world together with what we do. And to thank you guys for listening. So we just want to hang out and, you know, uh, tell tell jokes and tell stories and high five and hug and take pictures and just yeah. be cool together because this is like what it's all about. Yeah, no, we definitely appreciate all of your support. So if you're in SF and you already got tickets, great. If you are in SF and you don't have tickets, check Leave it out. now, drive. You might, you <laughs> might be able to to find those. Um, <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, so then uh, lastly, you can leave us feedback by emailing us at nvc at IGN.com. Yep. And also you can go on, on over to iTunes, leave us a show review, let us know what you think. Lastly, you can find us on Twitter. You can find Brian Altano at Agent Bizzle. 
You can find Callie Plaguey at Inky Do Dico. Spell it. <laughs> I N K Y D O J I K K O. It's Japanese. Sorry. Is that yeah. a Splatoon reference, or you did that <laughs> before? Told Splatoon, you this right? story. Yeah, I know. Well, I know. It's, just, it's a the clumsy girl anime trope. That's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Very yeah. clumsy. All right, there we go. And <laughs> I am uh, at Jose underscore Otero on Twitter. Thank you very much for listening, and we will be back next week with more Nintendo Voice Chat. 